Welcome to episode 35 of the Modern Skein podcast. My name is Sharon Graff and I am the owner of the Modern Skein, which is a yarn shop here in Montgomery, Texas. I'd like to welcome everyone that's tuning in, perhaps for the first time, and we're so glad to have you tune in. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Thank you for sticking around through some of our technical difficulties that we've had, but fingers crossed, I have figured out the solution to the issue of space on my computer and the upload issue as well. So we're going to dive in because this table is filled and I mean filled with the things that are new in the store, whips, you can see a finished object behind me. I mean there's a lot to get to. So let's get started. As you can see, this, ta -da, this is the Bubble Sweater by Stephen West, and this is the knit that I was secretly knitting on for our anniversary weekend. The plan was to wear this the anniversary weekend, however, it decided to be 79 degrees, basically 80 degrees, for the weekend, and... There's no way I'm wearing this and running around. So it got displayed on the lovely mannequin. But as you can see, this color, in case you weren't here, this is our, hold on, there you go. That is our custom color by Hedgehog that they dyed up for our anniversary. And I had a skein floating around here. Where'd it go? Here we go. So this is the skein of yarn. Why is it the light? It's cloudy, so the lighting in here is weird today. But that is our custom potluck. So I still have this available on DK and on Skinny Single, and it's going up on the website later today, and today is Wednesday because yesterday got crazy, Tuesday. Um, so this is the bubble shawl. I used the potluck custom for the body and for the dark blue, uh, bubbles, the texture. I used, um, Her Majesty's Navy by Red Stag Fiber and held a strand of some hedgehog mohair that I had laying around at the house. It was only about a half a skein's worth of ink. Um, so they're really dark, dark navy blue mohair. And it was plenty, more than enough. Uh, even the skein of Her Majesty's Navy, I would say, was um, probably, I used up probably two-thirds to three-fourths of a skein. So if you've used it as an accent and have the majority of a skein left, or whatever your contrast color is going to be, it most likely will work. I knit the second size. Um, and it fits really well. It has, I designed mine to, designed, no, I didn't design anything. I knit mine to have a little more positive ease. He wrote, well, he didn't write. He wrote the pattern, but he's modeling it one with negative ease and the other one with positive ease. And I preferred the look of the one with a little bit of positive ease, not a ton of positive ease. Uh, and then I also knit it shorter, so I made it more cropped. Go back, you can kind of see. I did not do the recommended bind off. I did um, a knit three pearl one ribbing on that because I didn't want it to really come in at all. I wanted it to kind of hang flat. And then I knit the sleeves shorter to their brown bracelet length or three quarter length. I did knit those with the twisted rib, um, however I just did a regular bind off. There was no tubular bind off, no tubular bind off at the bottom. Other than that, there was no modifications made. I knit the collar and did the short rows as instructed, which are really easy because he doesn't like traditional short rows, so it's basically just stop knitting, turn your work. No wrap and turns, no German short rows, no nothing. And so that's that so i love how the yarn 
worked up. I did alternate skeins on the body. I did not alternate skeins on the sleeves. And the only on here, how I alternated on the bubbles is I would just do uh, one skein for one row of the bubbles, pick up the other skein, and the other skein. So I didn't try and alternate within the bubbles, but I just basically skipped each every other one. Uh, so this is it, and like I said, it will be up on the website later today. We also had another custom color. We actually had four custom colors total. Red Steak Fibers custom sold out completely. We do not have any more. Hedgehog, we still have some available. I'm going to list it on the website. Dream in Color. This one is called It's Me, and it's this really dark gray toned navy with gray and black and then kind of these fun brighter yellow pops right there you can kind of see speckles um, this is the smooshy with cashmere base so this is a really nice soft super luxury base and this will also be listed on the website later this afternoon I have I think maybe eight skeins of this one left so I don't have a ton of it left but there is some uh, of the potluck let me show you closer it is mostly this royal blue navy blue with black speckles on a gray base but then it also has these fun pops of orange and then we have oh this is the potluck on skinny single then Diane with suburban stitcher dyed up a custom she calls it a very modern birthday. This is non-repeatable. She's not going to bring this back whatsoever. Obviously, once the potlucks are out, they're gone for good as well. This. How fun is this? So it's this creamy kind of mustardy base with all the speckles. Super fun. I only have four skeins of this left. So if you want some, grab it quick. Uh, I will be putting that up on the website, like I said, later this afternoon. Okay. Then the other thing, let's see, what else? Oh, so that was our custom birthdays. Now let's get back to what, we're out of order. That's confusing. Um, works in progress, because I don't really have anything else that's a finished object. So I'm going to show you all the little bits and bobs that I've worked on over this week. So I had some dental work earlier this week, so I actually got a decent amount of knitting in. So first off, this is my three color cashmere cowl that I've been working on. I've gotten a nice little chunk done. I am knitting this, so you can see I'm, I'm there. I'm knitting this out of... Chelsea Yarns, Chelsea Lux. This is her single base fingering. And the colors are Favorite Leather Boot. And then I have no idea what these two colors are because I can't find my tags for them. I know this color is what she used in her Nordiska as like her background base. And I believe if you go onto her website, she says, this is the color I used in my Nordiska. Or you can scroll back. Um, and I believe she used this dark gray in the Nordiska as well. Scroll back on Instagram. So that's my three color cashmere cowl. That's a, I almost said recipe. That's a pattern by Hohi Locatelli. And I can't really, s yes, I'm, s I did a thing and I bought the waxed plum canvas fringe field tote. I had a moment of weakness, what can I say? <sighs> Moving on. Um, what do I want to show next? This is my What the Fade by Andrea Mowry. And I have just begun fading in and in middle of a row. Why am I always in the middle of a row? I have just begun fading in color B 
in the reverse order. So I only have to fade in color B, knit color B for a little bit, fade in color A, knit color A, and then I'm done. So I'm, I'm seeing the finish. You can see what a gorgeous fade this is. And this is definitely reading greener on camera with the cloudy lighting. Let's see. This is a little better, truer representation, I feel, back here. Sorry, it's weird with the... So you can see we go from this dark uh, aged leather by Red Stag into Honeycomb by Ching into Cereal. And then we go into Dijon or Dijon then Cereal. I always confuse the two. And, and then um, Juniper. Yeah, I'm all confused. Zero, June. Age, age, leather, honeycomb, cereal, no, Dijon, cereal, juniper, and hawk. That's my colors. So, hopefully, I am going to be getting this finished this week. I have some high hopes because I have this that's getting close to finish. It's just there's a bajillion stitches per row. But this is really getting close to being finished. I have my next project that I'm going to show you. Can I find the right bag? Yeah. Is my Nordiska, which I bound off the body last night. So, yes, it is definitely cropped. But I wanted to knit it per the pattern, and I have. I'm not extending it or anything. But I figure. Yeah. Basically right now when I hold it up, it basically hits the top of my jeans and I have this cute black and I have a white one too, um, long tunicky blouse that I would wear underneath it. But all the color work is finished. It looks so nice. And then all I've got to do is do the neckband and pick up the sleeves. I will probably honestly pick up the neckband next and get that done and then pick up the sleeves. Um, I'm knitting this out of yarn that I picked up in Scotland on our trip. So this is not a yarn I carry. However, Kelbourne Woolen Scout will give you a very similar um, gauge and look with the kind of heatheredness. The yarn I'm using is Die Gilpin Lala. Lalam. Oh, I always forget. Still have a little and in here. Lalland, which is a Scottish wool. Um, so, like I said, Scout by Kelbourne Woolens is a sport weight like this is and would give you kind of a similar look. Um, of course, you can also do it in the fingering weight that the pattern originally was called for. Um, I've seen people do it in worsted weight and in DK, just knitting a different size depending on how they want it to fit, if they want it to fit more snug or if they want a lot of positive ease. And I just had a weird look on my face. I don't know why. Okay, what's in this bag? Oh yes. I also started another pro this is not it, but it reminded me that I started another project last night that I cannot show you because technically the pattern is not released yet. You'll have to wait until not next week's episode but the week after because then the pattern will be released and then I will have a nice chunk of it done and you can see the pattern that I'm working on. I don't know why I just did that. But anyway. Okay. Should I show you the, the yarn I'm using? I don't have all three skeins of it. I have two skeins of it. And then a mystery skein. If you're here over the birthday, you might know what I'm knitting. 
I know Diane knows what I'm knitting. Anywho, moving on. The other thing I mentioned last podcast was that I was going to re-knit my turtle dove. Oh, side note, I also mentioned maybe a podcast or two ago that I was ripping out my birds of a feather and then I did show you a little snippet on Instagram on how to freeze your mohair and rip it out. But I only ripped out one section and then my mom called and she asked to purchase the half finished (laughs) birds of a feather from me. Um, And so I did. So she has it and she's actually going to complete the blue birds of a feather um, and wear that for herself. Um, Let's see. So I did mention I'm going to re-knit my turtle dove because it has stretched out beyond recognition. So I actually have the turtle dove here with me. I knit this out of the original yarn, which is Wolf Oak Luft. Um, The thing with Wolf Oak Luft is the yarn is a core of cotton with merino fibers blown into it. Something we all know about cotton is that it grows or sags with wear. And it, that's just how cotton behaves. That's why you rarely see cotton sweaters, or at least 100% cotton sweaters, because they look great the first time you wear them, and then they're stretched out, they're very heavy, they're hot. People think, oh, a cotton sweater, it will be so nice and light. Unless it's lace, it usually isn't. It's usually quite heavy, unless it's blended with another fiber. So blended with wool, perhaps even blended with a linen or a silk. When you blend the cotton with something else, it tends to um, be lighter in weight and not grow quite as much. So I wasn't thinking that wool folk left would grow a whole lot. However, it coupled with my gauge now when I first knit the sweater my gauge when I first measured it was on but now when I go back and measure it it is off I think I don't really remember um but anyway I don't like how it looks when it's on me yes I have lost some weight since then since I knit it which was around the holidays so maybe there's something to do with that um but I feel that the yarn is, or the garment has sagged. And now, like, when you look at, see, I'm not really even pulling, and it's, I don't know. It just doesn't look, see, even this has gotten really big. I mean, look how huge this thing is. I mean, yes, it's supposed to be oversized, but this is like, fit me and Grace and Josh all in here. So, what I'm doing is re-knitting it, and you may say, this doesn't look like you ripped it out. Well, I still had a ball left over, like a most, mostly new ball, and so I decided to size down my needles and cast it on and look how much nicer this looks so now i have my funnel neck and yes i am knitting it to be snug because like we've already seen it's going to grow with body heat with wear and tear and everything else so i am knitting it now exactly per the pattern except on a smaller needle so pattern originally calls for 10 a us 10 for the ribbing and then a us 10.75 or an 11 millimeter needle for the body i have switched to now a 7 us 7 for the ribbing and a us 8 which is a five millimeter for the body. And you can see that it's much nicer, tighter fabric. And I have a lot nicer stitch definition. Let's compare. Let's 
See how you can see through? I can poke my finger through. And this, not so much. So, I've begun knitting this. I will still knit the small size. Um, I need to compare and see my stitches per inch, my new stitches per inch, and see how much smaller that is so I can get a rough idea of how much less the positive ease will be. But my guess is that I will go from, gosh, this is probably literally 20 inches of positive ease on me. I will probably go down to around five inches of positive ease, which is more my preference, which even if it grows, that might give me up to about eight inches of positive ease, which is still a little bit on the larger size, but this that's how the sweater's designed. Um, so I am perfectly okay with that. Um, and like I said, this is my, I don't have a problem re-knitting this sweater. It was a real fun sweater to knit. It only took me four days originally, so I don't feel like I've had a ton of time invested into it. Um, I knocked this much out in like an hour and a half, so it goes quickly, this sweater does, because it just, it goes very quickly. I would also think that this would be a fun, um, okay, so train of thought went um wolf oak left is a bulky weight yarn i think that you could get a really nice gauge and a really nice fabric if you knit on a smaller size needle maybe not quite as small as mine because remember i tend to knit loose got to remember that if you used an Aran weight or even a uh, like a heavy worsted like the Malabrigo Rios um, and knit it instead of on a 10 and 11 millimeter maybe you went down to like a US 8 and a US 9 um, and checked your gauge if your stitches per inch are smaller you know I was confuse myself on this if your stitches per inch are more than what is listed that means your stitches are smaller so if that's the case then you may need to size up the size of the garment that you're wanting to do if you want more positive ease this size the smallest size is designed to have a finished bust area measurement of, I believe, 41 and a half inches. Usually a small is in knitwear, most patterns, actually this would be more of like an extra small, more of the, I hope that didn't screw up my, I have it on, sorry. Okay, I think we're good, that's still good. Um, most Extra smalls on knitwear are designed for around a 30 to 32 inch bust. So, that being said, basically that's 10 inches of positive ease right then there off the bat. So, since I don't have a 30 bust, my bust is larger, like around a 34-ish to 36-ish. And... If I still get around a 41 inch finished measurement, then that has taken my positive ease from 10 inches to around six to seven inches. My math could be so screwed up right now, but it sounds about right. I think. So, long story short, this is too much math too early in the morning. Long story short, if you want to change how the garment fits, you have to pay attention to their gauge that they originally listed and the finished measurements and the recommended amount of positive or negative ease. Then you have to decide how you want it finished with either negative or positive ease and how much of either. 
and then determine your gauge and make the necessary modifications from there, either sizing up or sizing down, um, adding a repeat, removing a repeat, etc. Hopefully that did not just totally confuse everyone's morning. I hope it didn't. But there's your nugget of knowledge for today. I will go back to as little math as possible with my knitting. <laughs> um, and so basically, later today, you, if you come into the shop, you'll see me ripping this out and rewinding uh, my turtle dove. So I can keep on knitting. Okay. <sighs> uh, that is the end of all my works in progress. Um, like I said, I have the one that I'm knitting on. I'm sure I have other projects that I'm knitting on, but I didn't bring them with me. But anyway, long story short, and I'm jabber, jabber, jabber. So we're going to get back to what's new in the shop from the birthday weekend and just what's new in general. I already showed you the custom colorways. So the other thing that we kept from the birthday weekend is I did keep two um, colors of Suburban Stitcher mohair. So we kept the Oyster, which is this lovely kind of gray toned with um, teal and olivey green and blue speckles. And we kept Doily, which is very different. This is a gray base. This is more of a creamy yellow base. Um, and this is mostly a tonal. There's little bits of like a, a peach kind of cream color and then a little bit of more of a yellowy toned color, but very soft, very neutral. Great for adding to spring knits, um, both of these actually. And just to fill up our mohair wall a little bit more. Okay, um, then we also have from the birthday weekend, we got in some sock sets from Dream and Color. So it's a skein of yarn and then paired by them with a mini skein for contrasting heels and cuffs or heels and toes or however you decide you want to contrast. So these are sold as the set. They're $34. This is the smushy with nylon. Yeah, so 15% nylon content. So they're really fun because you get these fun color combinations that you might not have put together yourself. So this one is called Caldera with Azure Cove. And I am going to list these up on the website individually. They're not on there yet, but like I said, coming today or tomorrow, I gotta take pictures of them and then get them up on the website. So we have this blue one, which is the Caldera with Azure Cove. This is a fun one for any pink lovers. This is No Limit and Charge Cherry. So definitely reds and pinks. Then we have put these somewhere else. Then we have Gigi Laurel and Melon, which is a fun, super fun combo. This is City Town and Bridges with Prickly Pear. Fun, super fun one. This one screams spring to me. This is Tussie Mussie and Universe is Yours. Super springy, kind of Easter colors. This one's a very summer one. This is Haywire and Bedtime. No, oh, this one might not come through, but this is a real pretty royal blue. And then you've got, and the skein itself has some little royal blue speckles. Then this is Mercado Lights and Torchwood. So a bright one, but with a neutral heel and toe. And then another summery one. This is Six of Everything and Blue Fish. So again, more of a, this one's more of a teal and navy for the contrast, and then a teal with fun speckles. The other um, new yarn we have is actually from Red Stag. And this is a new color called Henry VIII. So you've got kind of these browns and uh, mauves, deep mauves, and then the gilded uh, yellow, and then speckles of magenta. That's Henry VIII. It's available on fingering, so the estate fingering, which is 100% merino. 
490 uh, yards in a skein. We also have red stag fiber pins. Those will also go up, they're $8. Um, and we have a few of our cupcake birthday pins left, so I'm gonna put those up as well for anyone that wants to live vicariously through our fun pin. Uh, the pin was designed by one of our customer's daughter, actually, uh, who's a graphic designer, and I think she did a great job. Okay, then what else? we have some new yarn. So we have this new yarn line called Dungarees. And th so this is super neat because it is 100% recycled blue jeans. So what they do is they take blue jeans that are, I guess, donated or collected. Um, they, of course, take all the buttons and stuff off. And then they spin it down. They sort it by color. And then they spin it down. Um, so it's technically 95% color uh, cotton, 5% other fibers. So that would be like the spandex that is sometimes added to jeans. Or maybe if there's a little bit of thread that was left in there. So I just kind of have to say this. But this is all spun from 100% recycled denim. So we have, and because they sort it in colors and then some of it they bleach, we have a nice variety of colors. So this one is called... Color number one. They actually have names, but I don't know. But this is your dark, almost like black denim. It's kind of, um, it's not like fresh, crisp black denim. This is aged, worn black denim. So that kind of look. Then you have, oh, and this is all, I would consider this to be a fingering weight. It technically on the tag says it's a sport. I would call it a fingering weight, personally. Then you have the denim color, kind of a classic mid medium wash denim. This one is beautiful neutral. This one, I think they, it's the one they call stone. And so it's like khaki colored, but with a hint of gray. And this is more of a true chino khaki color. And then you have basically the bleached um, super white, off-white, winter white denim. So this is all, this is them next to each other so you can get an idea. This is going to be so good for your summer tea tops, for if you want to crochet some of the new stuff that's in Pom Pom Magazine. This would be so cute to crochet, like the little poncho shawlette thing. Um, sorry, I keep looking out the window. There's a a dog or something out there um yeah that would be super cute you can do um like super light shawls with it for summertime like i said the tea tops um basically anything that is designed for a cotton or a linen um you could totally use that in place of give you a real fun look um Okay, then we also have a new line of yarn in called Concha. And this is also kind of thinking spring and summer. This is a 50% wool, 50% cotton blend. I can't even get all the colors in here. Ta -da! So super bright, springy colors. This is hand dyed and spun in Peru. Peru? Peru. Yes. Um, so we have, this color is called Rio Pisco. So it's basically like a denim blue gray. And this is, you can kind of see, it looks kind of like hand spun. And, and they're calling it a heavy fingering to a sport weight. And it's basically got a ply of cotton and a ply of merino. Really takes the color really cute. Uh, this is Valle Sagrado, so super neon, lemony, citrone kind of color. This is Laguna Arapa, your beautiful sea blue. Lobos de Tierra, 
bright, bright, vibrant purple. I mean, it's glowing. Then you've got Playa Roja, which is more of a, I would call this like a strawberry coral color. Very pretty. This is Vinicuna, hot, hot pink. And then this one's kind of a multicolored a little bit, Isla del Sol. So it's got some pinks, some oranges, and some peaches all in here. Um, so that's the whole color range that we have. Um, oh no, I forgot one. Casa Andina. So this is your browns and kind of naturally cream colors as well. Uh, so that's a whole range of colors, eight color, eight? Yes, eight colors. Uh, they're on our plant wall. Uh, so if you haven't been in in a little while, basically if you haven't been in since yesterday, you have not seen the new layout of the shop. So as you can see, the wool wall is the same. That really hasn't changed. But we have brought back our plant wall. So all of our either 100% or blended plant fibers. So cottons, linens, bamboos, sugar cane, um, viscose, tinsel, things like that are all going to be on that wall. Um, we're also getting in some other um, linens and hemp's as well uh, for the summer. So that wall will be expanding because we're already thinking spring, um, summer teas, um, fun shawls, things like that. So that wall will be expanding over the coming months. And then we also moved into this back room. We moved in and combined our luxury and exotic wall into one, and so we have our super luxe and exotic. So that's silk blends, that is cashmere's, uh, mohair, alpaca, baby surrey, which is alpaca, and yak, are, and possum are all on this back wall that I'm staring at right now. Um, so that is fully loaded right now, and it's gorgeous. Um... Yeah, so we've rearranged the shop a little bit. It looks really awesome. Hope you come by and see it out. See it out. Check it out. In the front room, we have a really big focus now on the books because I'm going to show you now some new books and new accessories that we got in as well. Because we got in more than just yarn. So, obviously, because I've talked about it, we got in the latest spring pom-pom. This has some gorgeous patterns for spring and kind of year-round patterns. Um, see here. There's also a recipe for making your own lotion bar, which is interesting. Oh, see, I think this would be so cool in that denim. It's actually a crocheted piece, but in the recycled denim, that would be gorgeous. That's a beautiful tea. I really am considering casting that on. This one's too. This one's real pretty too. That's another crochet pattern. I really appreciate Pom Pom doing, including more crochet patterns because crochet is just as important as knitting. And I highly recommend everyone learn how to crochet. If you Crochet comes in handy if you're ever doing a provisional cast on in your knitting. If you want a different way to finish an edge or add a border that's similar to maybe an I-cord but you need to go fast, a single crochet edge is super quick. Um, Marie Walland is a very famous British designer for knitwear but she almost always in all of her patterns includes an accent of crochet. And mixing crochet and knitting together is gorgeous. She has some beautiful, beautiful pieces on Ravelry I'd recommend you go take a look at. But crochet is super easy. We are going to have in the summer some crochet classes again. And we'll also, of course, have our beginning knitting. And we are trying to finalize our calendar for our other classes that we're going to be doing. Because we're wrapping up our sweater knit along. I am really all over the place. We should be talking about books, but we are wrapping up the sweater knit along uh, that you have till March 31st to complete your sweater and either email me or tag me on Instagram that you've with a picture with your completed sweater. 
so I'm looking forward to those because one name will get drawn out of all the finishers to win a $75 gift card. Okay, back to books. So I showed you Pom Pom. We also got in Strange Brew. So if you're wanting um, basically a great way of making your own color work or easing into color work for the first time, this is a great book of telling you how to basically build your own sweater. You basically pick out your size that you want, choose your yarn, figure out if you want bottom up or top down, and what motifs you want, and it's build your own. So definitely recommend this book for any per people that are interested in color work. Then we have Within. This is a really awesome book by Shannon Cook and Jane Richmond. There's some gorgeous sweaters in here and accessories, hats, things like that. The, um, can't find it here. The Timber, I think it's what it's called. Of course, I can't find it now. Anyway, oh, there we go. that sweater. I really want to knit that sweater. Uh, let's see. Oh, and then we have West Knits Best Knits. So this is book number one, which focuses all on shawls. And this is book number two, which focuses all on sweaters. So there's tons of patterns in both of these books. These are great coffee table books as well. They do retail for $35. However, they are well worth every penny. Plus, then you have these, and in case you should ever meet him, you could have him sign the book if you take it with you. If you go to Vogue, if you go to um, a retreat that he might be at, things like that. Um, let's see. Okay, other notions we got in. We got in these cute little mesh pouches. So these have these little snaps. These are by Coco Knits, and you just stick in your ball of yarn, and then you can snap together in di different ways and it just kind of keeps it contained and but still easy to move around so these are fun little add-ons to your project bag we also got the accessory roll so I'm going to show you real quick how to use the accessory roll So this is the accessory roll, looks like so. Take off your elastic bands, open it up, and you have these four compartments. Now, nothing is going to fall out of these, but you just press and pull open. It's kind of like a little origami, and then you can put needles, you can put scissors, you can put lip balms, things like that, and it just closes up. And if you decide, I'm traveling, but I only need this one, you can pop it off with the snaps and just take this with you. And then, all you gotta do is pop it, take this out, pop it back on. So, super convenient, but super organized. You can put a little piece of washi tape or something on here to label yours, I've seen that. Um, and it's just a great, really nice, sturdy addition to your tote bag and your project bag. So we have that. And then we got in all the new, fun spring flavors and some restocks of Tuft Woolens. So we got in two new lip balms. So we have already honey and cardamom. But we also now have the espresso vanilla, which smells so good. It's basically a latte in a lip balm and sweet orange also extremely yummy but not like sweet orange like it's a sweet dreamsicle kind of it's just more like non-bitter orange but non-bitter orange doesn't sound as good as sweet orange so um we got restocked in the russian flower um which is quite possibly one of my favorites the vanilla almond was restocked Chai Spice was restocked. Um, 
And if you had asked me to hold back any balms for you, I have done that. Um, and Plum and Amber was restocked. So those we got restocked of our scents, but then we got some new ones. So we got Fresh Air, which is an awesome one. Uh, just plain simple lavender for all the lavender lovers. Royal Apiary, which Royal Apiary is a lavender lemon kind of combo. It's really nice. Vetiver Cedarwood, men really like this. Actually, Josh likes to use this before and after his workouts because it doesn't leave his hands sticky, but it helps prevent calluses when he lifts his weights. Sweet Lime, it has like a hint of basil to it as well, which is really nice. Pink Grapefruit, kind of a sweet grapefruit smell. This one is so sinful, it's so good. Blueberry lemonade. However, it smells identical to the fresh baked blueberry scones that they sell next door. I want to eat it. It's so good. Tomato vine, which honestly, I was a little worried about this smell because like, is this going to smell like dirt? Uh, but it actually has a really nice, how would I even describe it? I, there's like a fresh garden after the rain and kind of soap smell to it. It's really nice. I actually like it a lot. And then Night Sky, my absolute favorite. It's um, chamomile, I think in patchouli and maybe something else, but Night Sky, it's one of her newest scents. And yeah, several of those came home with me. Um, what else? Oh, we also have... I don't know if these will come in. Might be hard to see. Let's see if I can block out my face so you can see it. Anyway, these are um, stitch markers with the Red Stag Fiber logo on it. And then these awesome things. This says, geez, if I can get it over here. This bag belongs to a knitter from the Modern Skein. And then on the back with a fine tip Sharpie, you just write your name on there and then you can attach it to your project bag. And then we also have these beautiful Victorian scroll work um, little snips. Super sharp, um, super elegant. I think that covers everything. This has been a very long episode but thank you for sticking around if you have. I'm working tirelessly today to get all of the items that you've been seeing onto the website. Bear with me, it may take a day or two um, to get them all photographed, especially since it's cloudy and raining and the photographs probably won't happen today because it's just nasty weather outside. Um, but I will get them up on the website as soon as I possibly can. Of course, you can swing by and pick up any of the items that you see while we have them in stock. Um, as far as events going on, we have our next trunk show will be in April. Um, and it will actually be over local yarn store day. Woohoo! Which is going to be awesome, which I believe is April the 27th. It's the last Saturday of April which is local yarn store day. So I'm already working on getting some amazing kits and special items for LYS day. Um, but we also have a trunk show coming in. Her name is Lisa Urban and she is a local um, yarn dyer from the Bryan College Station area and she also does art. Um, so she'll have prints of her art that incorporates um, yarn and fiber uh, with her as well. So that'll be a fun, unique gift item that you can check out when you're here for local yarn store day um that's in april um may we have another um trunk show coming in but fingers crossed that one will be an all month long trunk show so i just have to double check and confirm that that will be awesome um yeah there's always lots of stuff in store so thanks so much be sure and come by watch our instagram feed at the modern skein for the most up-to-date updates. Um, yeah. Just thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you around next time. We'll see you either in the store or we'll see you online with a like, subscribe, thumbs up, hopefully. Yeah. 
we'll just see you around. So if you're not getting notifications when the podcast uploads, hit the hit subscribe, but then hit the little bell um, down in this general area. Um, that will give you a little notification that says, hey, Sharon Graff just uploaded a new podcast. So thanks so much for tuning in and we will see you next time and I will stop babbling on. <laughs> Bye-bye everyone.